So if somebody's having difficulty with their sense of smell, that they're having lots of sweating, that they're not sleeping well, that maybe they're getting depressed, how in the world does that turn on a light for a physician to say, you may have early Parkinson's and we need to get to work? Well, actually, we're looking for screening things now because we have drugs on the horizon that will slow the disease down for the first time ever. So now there is an interest in trying to find them earlier because they lose this chemical for eight to 10 years before they develop a tremor. So they've had this disease for some time by the time they come in, typically. Now we know if we can catch them with screening for these non-motor symptoms, we may be able to treat them early before they ever get to the 30% loss and we would be treating them at a higher level of dopamine. So if somebody is not, their smell is not good, from an allergy standpoint, we think of nasal polyps that are in the nose, sinus disease, we get a sinus x-ray. If that's all clear, then we need to be thinking about the possibility of early It could Parkinson's? be, yes. I mean, we're looking at several of those, and that would be one of them. Um, and we know it can happen from other things. You know, head injuries can cause it, sinus disease, other things can cause it. But if you have several of these screening factors over time, and now we have a new scan, as of several years ago as well. It's called the DAT scan, or the DAT scan, and it shows dopamine transport. And so that can be, if that's positive, there's a decreased dopamine transport in the basal ganglia. So that's going to be helpful so that we don't have to wait 10 years to see how good the screens are. How sophisticated is the DAT screen, the scan, it's, DAT scan? It's very good, um, and it's, we have one in Knoxville, UT, uh, has the DAT scan available. So if we, we've got a, if somebody is seeing somebody with a sense of smell problems or with depression or they're having trouble sleeping, does the sleep specialist look for this? Does the ear, nose, and throat doctor look for this? Or does the primary care physician? It looks to me like when we're looking in the back, we're seeing these things and we've got to figure out how to look forward. Yes. And when, and when we get those screens, we will tell everyone, but it's going to involve probably the REM sleep behavior disorder, which is highly associated with it. Um, and it doesn't take a sleep clinic to diagnose that. Um, and the sense of smell, um, so those will be some of them. Constipation will be very difficult because it's too ubiquitous. I mean, it can be caused by their diets, their medications, numerous things can cause it. So I don't think that will be a screen. And we're looking at the autonomic system because of the sweating and the bile and bladder issues, bladder control issues and things. So that system's involved very early. And so that may be another area we're looking at, but there will be documented screens that you will know the three things are the ones to look for, because some of them we can't use all of them. 